Hello, good morning, students. Today is 10th October. We will start another refractory error that is hypermetropia. Last time we have seen about myopia. So, in errors of refraction, we know that immetropia is optically normal eye, and it can be defined as a state of refraction wherein the parallel rays of light they will come from infinity and focus on the retina. In myopia. the rays coming from infinity they will be focusing in front of the retina and just like this that is happening opposite in hypermetropia that is called as a long sightedness the term hypermetropia is derived from hyper meaning in excess met meaning measure and opia meaning of the eye it is also called as a hyperopia or long sightedness the term was first suggested in 1755 by kashner hypermetropia this can be asked in your theory examination for a short note in your viva also you have to answer about hypermetropia then convex lenses the uses of convex lenses so this topic is important from theory as well as viva point of view the synonym for hypermetropia is long sightedness it is a refractive state of eye wherein parallel rays of light coming from infinity are focused behind the retina with accommodation at rest this line is important with accommodation at rest means the lens is flat the lens is not accommodated the posterior focal point is behind the retina which receives a blurred image in this picture you can see that light that is depicted in red color that is coming from far infinity and focused behind the retina so the patient will get a blurred image the types of hypermetropia are axial hypermetropia curvature hypermetropia index hypermetropia positional hypermetropia and absence of crystalline lens is also having a hypermetropic state of a refractive error that we call it as a aphakia it can be a traumatic aphakia or it can be surgically removed crystalline lens so in hypermetropia axial hypermetropia it is a most common there is a axial shortening of eyeball if there is a 1 mm shortening of the antero posterior length that results in three diopter of hypermetropia so hypermetropic eye is a small in myopic eye is longer in axial length axial hypermetropia may be developmental or pathological high hypermetropia occurs in microphthalmos short axial length generally if it is less than 20 mm you call it as a hypermetropic eye in curvature of hypermetropia curvature of lens cornea or both is flatter than normal so when the curvature is flatter the light is focused behind the retina and if the curvature is more light is focused in front of retina 1 mm increase in radius of curvature will cause a six diopter of hypermetropia so in your viva the examiner can ask about shortening of 1 mm your answer will be shortening of 1 mm axial length will cause a three diopter of hypermetropia and curvature 1 mm shortening in the curvature will cause six diopter of hypermetropia index hypermetropia change in the refractive index of lens in old age that is also occurs in diabetics under treatment so in diabetics because there is a osmotic imbalance the lens is when the patient's blood sugar is fluctuating he will have a refractive error change as per his diabetes is not in control so in a index hypermetropia you can see that in diabetics under treatment what is positional hypermetropia posteriorly placed a crystalline lens in some of the patients if the lens has changed its position absence of crystalline lens either congenital or acquired acquired means following surgical removal 
or posterior dislocation after trauma it leads to a condition called as aphakia and it is a condition of high hypermetropia so this is the etiology of hypermetropia you can see it can have axial curvature or index position of the refracting surface absence of an element that is aphakia functional and because of drug that is cycloplegic drug so you can remember this uh, table what are the clinical types of hypermetropia so there are three clinical types of hypermetropia simple or developmental that is a commonest form it results from normal biological variations in the development of eyeball simple developmental axial hypermetropia and developmental curvatural hypermetropia pathological hypermetropia result due to congenital or acquired conditions of the eyeball which are outside normal biological variation development what is pathological hypermetropia it in includes index hypermetropia that is because of acquired cortical sclerosis positional hypermetropia that is posterior subluxation of lens aphakia means absence of lens conjugative hypermetropia due to surgically overcorrected myopia then pathological axial hypermetropia due to forward displacement of the retina as seen in retinal detachment central serous retinopathy and orbital tumors that is pressing over the retina from the back side and so the shortening of axial length that is causing as a pathological axial hypermetropia pathological curvature of hypermetropia due to post traumatic or post inflammatory corneal phlalatomy if there is a trauma to the cornea if there is a cornea ulcer so there can be change in the curvature of the cornea and that is causing pathological curvature of hypermetropia pseudophagic hypermetropia this term is used after the implantation of an underpowered intraocular lens you are calculating the expected uh, intraocular lens power what will give you the emetropia to the patient but because of some abnormal calculation or aberrations in the calculation of intraocular lens power and if you have put an improper diopteric power of a lens you get a refractive surprise so under powered intraocular lens if you have implanted accidentally the patient will have a pseudophagic hypermetropia what is functional hypermetropia the third type that is results from paralysis of accommodation as in patients with third nerve paralysis and internal ophthalmoplegia so when there is a third nerve paralysis you can get a dilated pupil as well as there is a problem in the ciliary muscle the ciliary muscle is deprived of the supply of the nerve connection so there will not be accommodation that paralysis of accommodation will cause flattening of the lens and because the lens is flattening the rays coming from far infinity they will be focused up behind the retina this is called as a functional hypermetropia what are the components of hypermetropia the hypermetropia consist of total hypermetropia in that latent hypermetropia manifest hypermetropia in manifest hypermetropia again you can have a facultative and absolute hypermetropia these are the components of hypermetropia this question can be asked in your viva what is total hypermetropia what is facultative and what is absolute hypermetropia so total hypermetropia is the total amount of refractive error which is estimated after complete cycloplegia after complete cycloplegia means after the dilatation of pupil with ciliary muscle paralysis with atropin atropin is the most potent midriatic as well as cycloplegic drug the total hypermetropia consists of latent and manifest hypermetropia this is depicted in the picture total hypermetropia you can have in a tablet form latent hypermetropia and manifest 
latent is again because of the tone of ciliary muscle manifest hypermetropia is divided into facultative hypermetropia that is corrected by the accommodative effort and absolute hypermetropia that will not be corrected by the accommodative effort we will see one by one so the total hypermetropia latent that is due to inherent tone of ciliary muscle manifest is not corrected by the ciliary tone and in manifest you can have a facultative within range of patient's accommodation means it can be corrected by the use of accommodation and absolute hypermetropia it cannot be overcome by accommodation what it so what is the clinical picture symptoms vary depending upon the age of patient and degree of refractive error asymptomatic small refractive error in young patient asthenopia tiredness or strain of eyes there can be frontal or frontotemporal headache and there can be watering or mild photophobia so these are the symptoms by which a patient can present to ophthalmology opd so we will see what is the total hypermetropia and latent hypermetropia total hypermetropia is the total amount of refractive error which is estimated after complete cyclobilia just we have seen in latent hypermetropia it implies the amount of hypermetropia it is generally about one diopter which is normally corrected by the inherent tone of ciliary muscle the degree of latent hypermetropia is more or high in small children and gradually decreases with age the latent hypermetropia is disclosed when refraction is carried after abolishing the tone of with atropine then manifest hypermetropia is the remaining portion of total hypermetropia which is not corrected by the tone of ciliary muscle it consists of two points that is facultative and absolute facultative hypermetropia is that part which can be corrected by the patient's own effort of accommodation and the absolute hypermetropia is the residual part of manifest hypermetropia which is not corrected by patient's accommodative effects so that is called as absolute so total hypermetropia consists of latent and manifest and manifest you can have a facultative and absolute hypermetropia at birth at birth the eyeball is relatively short having plus 2 to plus 3 hypermetropia this is gradually reduced until by the age of 5 to 7 years the eye is immetropic and remains so till about the age of 50 years after this there is a tendency to develop hypermetropia which gradually increases until the extreme of life the eye has the same plus 2 to plus 3 which when it was started the senile hypermetropia is due to changes in the crystalline lens what are the signs of hypermetropia the size of eyeball may appear small as a whole the cornea may be slightly smaller than the normal anterior chamber is comparatively shallow tinoscopy and autorefractometry reveals hypermetropia fundus reveals small optic disc it is called as a pseudo papillitis a scan ultrasonography reveals short anterior posterior length of the eyeball then we will come what is the grading of hypermetropia you have seen the types clinical types and the parts or components of hypermetropia then what are the grades of hypermetropia american optometric association has defined three grades of hypermetropia so it can be divided into low moderate and high grades so when the refractive error is less than 2 diopters when it is plus 2 to 5 diopter and it is more than plus 5 diopter so it is divided as a low moderate and high what are the complication complications means if hypermetropia is not corrected for a long time so we can have these complications or associations so recurrent styles blepharitis chalagia then you can have a accommodative to convergence squint in a patient or a child then the small eyes they are more predisposed for the 
you can just do glaucoma then you can have amblyopia this is an anatomically normal eye but physiologically functionless it can be because of anisometropic strabismic or ametropic cause so coming for the treatment point of uh, for this uh, hypermetropia you can have optical treatment and surgical treatment this we have seen in also myopia optical treatment and surgical treatment so what is optical treatment the rules for prescribing glasses we know that you are doing retinoscopy then diagnosing the corrector of fracture diagnosing and this is a objective findings we can give a subjective correction the refraction under complete cycloplegia is carried out if manifest refractive error is small correction only if the patient is symptomatic spherical correction should be compatible and if there is astigmatism that will be in our later topic where what is astigmatism but if there is astigmatism associated with a spherical correction it should be fully corrected modes of prescription of convex glasses or lenses the spectacles are more compatible safe and easy method of correcting hypermetropia the contact lenses they are indicated in unilateral hypermetropia that is anisometropia so this can be asked in your viva in which condition you can use a contact lens in a patient of hypermetropia so if it is a uniocular or unilateral hypermetropia you can go for contact lenses because there are problem with a prescription of spectacles if it is only uniocular hypermetropia so there will be anisometropia there will be anisoconia anisoconia means there will be change in the image magnification in between both eyes and there will not be a fusion there will be confusion so you can have a contact lens used in a unilateral hypermetropia this should be your answer in your viva these are the pictures just to know if you are putting a plus or convex lens in front of the eye the light will be focused on the retina in younger children less than 4 years they can accept full cycloplegic correction in older children you can undercorrect slightly and if there is exophoria hypermetropy is undercorrected by 1 to 2 diopters what is the surgical treatment surgical treatment is not as effective just we have seen in myopia but there are some procedures they are trying that is a cornea based they are thermal laser keratoplasty hyperopic prk hyperopic lasik and conductive keratoplasty lens based procedures are facic refractive lens that is prl or icl and there is a refractive lens exchange you can just go through this thank you